Coming up, we'll explain the science behind your body's own special army. Then around the globe, we'll take you to China for a great adventure. This is the Beijing Old City. Also ahead, meet Waffles and Mochi. They've joined forces with former First Lady Michelle Obama to teach kids about food and how to eat healthy. Hello, Waffles and Mochi. Jackson Daly has the scoop. I heard you guys teamed up with former First Lady Michelle Obama. Can you tell me what it's like working with her? Mrs. O, oh, she's really the, the best. Plus, two brothers are stepping up to help charities around the world. We've got their inspiring story just ahead. And jam session. There you go. I'll tell you about a school music program in California that's teaching kids and giving them a much needed break during the pandemic. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Lester Holt. It is great to be with you guys. Hope you are doing well. We've got a super lineup ahead. We'll take you to the Great Wall of China. It's the longest man-made structure in the world. Plus, we can't wait for you to meet these two brothers who are designing their own socks to help others. And if you're a music fan, we'll get into the groove and hear from some students who have discovered a love for music this past year, and I just may join them. But... Our top story continues to be the coronavirus and the road to recovery. You may have heard the word antibody. It's been in the news a lot this year, and it got us thinking, just what is an antibody and why is it so important? Our pal, Dr. John Torres, explains. I'm hearing a lot about antibodies. What's an antibody? What is an antibody testing? I hear it in the news always. So just what is an antibody? Well, antibodies are what our bodies use to fight off germs like coronavirus. So picture your body with its own special army. When a virus gets inside our body, our immune system acts like an army and attacks the germs to get rid of them. It uses antibodies, kind of like soldiers that are specially trained to attack that one type of germ. But the first time a new germ like coronavirus gets inside our body, the immune system doesn't really know what to do with it. It takes a few days to teach these antibodies, these soldiers, to attack the virus and get rid of it. But then once that germ is gone, the antibodies go back into a kind of resting mode. The soldiers retreat, they wait, constantly watching to see if it shows up again at the ready to defend if needed. If the germ does show up again, then the body is ready with specially trained antibodies that are prepared to quickly get rid of it. One of the reasons some people get so sick with viruses like the coronavirus is because it does take a few days for our soldiers to learn how to fight off these new germs. So if someone has recovered from the coronavirus, they do indeed have the antibodies. But scientists still aren't sure just how long those antibodies will protect them. That's why vaccine shots are so important to keep us healthy. My name is Catherine and we live in North Carolina. I'm Charlie and I'm six. But we want to know, how does the vaccine work? Well, vaccines can trick our body into developing these specially trained soldier-like antibodies even before germs are around. So the first time it does see a new germ, it knows how to attack it and get rid of it before it can make us sick. As each day passes, more and more people in the U.S. and around the world are getting vaccinated. But did you know that in some countries, maybe as many as 30 countries, no one, not a single person has gotten the vaccine yet? And since the pandemic affects the whole world, it's important to get these vaccines to these countries and to the people that live there as soon as possible. Lester? It's a big challenge ahead of us. All right, Dr. John Torres, thanks for that as always. Well, speaking of vaccines, our friend Cynthia McFadden is on the ground in Africa right now and has an update on the vaccine rollout in Uganda and what life is like there for kids. Cynthia? Hi, Lester, and welcome to Bavuma Island. We're in Africa, in the country of Uganda. This is a series of islands, 52 in total. About 130,000 people live here, and it's not easy to get here. We took a couple of planes, a couple of cars, and several boats. Now, this is an important place in the world. We've come with UNICEF. Now, they're the UN agency that cares about children all over the world, and they're here with vaccines. Now, they're not vaccinating kids. What they're doing is vaccinating healthcare workers. That's vital to the lifeblood of this community. They're also vaccinating 
elders, and of course in every community we care about our grandparents. So we've learned a lot. School is not in session here. Only 1% of kids are going to school, and the kids in the Bavuma Islands, when they are in school, many get there by canoe. <laughs> not exactly like getting on the school bus, and yet, in many ways, kind of the same thing. We've learned a lot about the life here. Uh, it's tough. Um, people work hard. Um, and they live in, in, in sometimes very, very difficult circumstances. But some things really are the same. You know, they care about each other, and you're going to see that just like kids around the world, they love to play with cameras and to pose. Back to you, Lester. All right, Cynthia, fascinating. Thanks so much. All right, time now for our Around the Globe series. Today, we head to the other side of the world to a country rich in history, food, and home to one of the wonders of the world. Our friend Janice Mackie Freyer takes us to China. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a kid in China? A place with huge cities, super fast trains, and of course, pandas. Even though China is on the other side of the world, a lot of things aren't so different. Mm, on the weekend, I also have some extra class. Meet Eric Zhao. Like a lot of six-year-olds, Eric is very busy. Friends, now I'm in the park. Let me show you around. He likes making videos in English to share on social media. This is our national flag. This is the Beijing old city. Eric lives in China's capital, Beijing, a city that's famous for history and food, such as sweet sticky rice. Can you see the red bean inside? He's not so big on the kind with red beans. Cheers. Bowza are steamed buns filled with meat, vegetables, or sweet stuff. But if he had to choose his most favorite thing to eat? It's a very long name, I can tell you. Tell me. It's called sugar coated hawthorn on a stick. In Chinese, it's called bing tang lu. It's a little sour. OK, I think we should try and find that. Look, this is fruit one. This is like a rainbow, so many colors. Right? I see an orange there. Candied fruit mission accomplished. The sweet and sour taste. I like sweet and I also like sour. What's next on Eric's favorite things tour? We are in a hutong. What's a hutong? As you can see, hutongs are very narrow, right? Behind hutong doors are houses and courtyards connected by narrow alleys. I think living in China is so much fun because China has so many um, other locations. Like what? Like the Great Wall. The Great Wall of China was built mostly with stone and earth over several of China's dynasties. A dynasty is when a family rules for a long time. What makes the Great Wall great? Well, it's the longest man-made structure the world has seen, like ever. If you put all of the sections together, it's over 13,000 miles long. All that wall also means there's space to run. It's Fan Jingqing's first visit here, and she loves it. Did you know that I can climb the rock, she says? I like the exercise to make me stronger. In most places in China, kids start school early in the morning, but they take a longer lunch. Subjects are what you would expect, like math, vocabulary, science, and physical activities. Tian Tian is 16, Fei Fei is 14. They're sisters who used to live in the U.S., but they've grown up mostly in China. China is such like a giant diverse place. Like there are big cities like in Beijing, which are just like big cities in the U.S., like New York or L.A., just like with the Beijing twist on it. They like hanging out with friends and with each other. They did a lot of that during the pandemic. I think no matter where we are, I think I most value our family because home is not like the place you are on a map, it's where you are with the people that you love. Just being with my family through it all, it's been really sweet. Help me. <laughs> what sort of activities do you do after school? Running, skipping, etc. I do some exercise. And after school, Eric takes hip hop. Three, four, five, six. He says he wants to travel to the moon and maybe someday to the U.S. I want to learn more English. For now, Eric has some Chinese words for you. To say hello is ni hao, xie xie is thank you, and zai jian. Zai jian. It means goodbye. Xie xie Eric, zai jian from China. 
All right, Janice, thanks very much. I had a chance to spend some time in China several years ago while on assignment for NBC, and the Great Wall of China is definitely really cool. It's worth seeing. My team and I actually went down the side on a slide, believe it or not. That was a lot of fun. Well, how about a pop quiz now where we put you to the test? Okay, so kids, what is the fastest land animal? Is it A, cheetah, B, lion, or C, coyote? We'll get the answer after the break. Just ahead for us, former First Lady Michelle Obama has two new friends, and they've come together to teach kids about healthy eating. When we first walked into the supermarket, we were like, whoa, <gasps> look at all this fresh food. Jackson Daly speaks with the stars of the new show. Plus, inspiring kids will introduce you to these brothers who have found a creative way to help those in need. This pet has become a huge star on the internet. We'll explain how. And these students are making music thanks to this school music program. Okay, now let's get the answer to our pop quiz. The question is, what is the fastest land animal? Cheetah, lion, or coyote? The answer is A, cheetah. Cheetahs can reach a speed of up to 60 to 70 miles an hour. Amazing. All right, well, former First Lady Michelle Obama has a new project out, and it's something that's really important to her, kids and nutrition. She's joined forces with two new friends, Waffles and Mochi, and together they're teaching kids about nutrition and healthy eating. Our pal, Jackson Daly, caught up with the stars of the new show. Hi, Waffles. Hi, Mochi. It's awesome to meet you guys. I love food. My family loves food. I'm sure you guys love food. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We love food. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Wow, it's like a rainbow in my mouth. So, can you tell me a little like more about like what the show's about? Um, Yeah, totally. We go on amazing, tasty food adventures. How much? Ah. Yep, there's this magical shopping cart of our dreams. It's called Magic Cart. And she takes us all around the world and we learn all about the different ingredients and how people use food all around the world. Hi, I'm Waffles and this is Mochi. Well, well. Hello, Waffles and Mochi. So I heard you guys teamed up with former First Lady Michelle Obama. Can you tell me what it's like working with her? Former First Lady? I think. Are you talking about the super supermarket, the store owner? Oh, oh yeah. Mrs. O. <laughs> I need you to do me a huge, huge favor. We are ready, Mrs. O. Here's a list. Whoa. Mrs. O, she's really the, the best. I mean, when we first walked into the supermarket, we were like, whoa, <gasps> look at all this fresh food. And we said, we want a job, we want a job. And she gave us a shot. She's been so nice to us, huh, Mochi? That's awesome. You guys have gone to a lot of different places, out of a lot of different cultures, a lot of different Food. What would you guys say that your favorite like food and culture was? Oh wow! I mean, how how can we pick a favorite, Hamoki? Huh, there were so many cool foods like the pani puri. Uh -huh. Remember with Chef Preeti? Yeah. Oh, that that bite was so delicious. Yeah. What about you, Mo? You like learning about where you come from, bud? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, we went to Japan and we saw how they make mochis. We you saw, saw how they make you mochi? Oh yeah, these, yeah, there was these these guys and they were pounding mochis. They were going back, 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 back. Mochi, that was so much fun. Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me that I just ate mushrooms? Yes. My sisters are very picky eaters. What do you think's the best way to start helping them to just slowly start eating better? I think that there's just so many different ways to prepare food. That's why we, we, we are so excited to become chefs one day, huh, Mochi? Yeah. And I think like every ingredient that we're learning about is teaching us that there's so many different ways to prepare it. And maybe they don't like a certain ingredient a certain way, but maybe if you cook it a different way, maybe they'll like it. I didn't know I was eating mushrooms. Mushrooms are fantastic. Just leave your door open yeah. and your mind is gonna say, Welcome, mushrooms. Welcome, mushrooms. <laughs> What's your favorite snack mm. that like you just have often? I do like chocolate chip cookies. Mm -hmm. Same. Um, what do you like? <gasps> Pickled mango. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. I mean, Mochi. Mochi is a big fan of pickles. All kind of pickles. Mm -hmm. So, how are you guys liking Zoom? Because of no. COVID and all. I, ugh, I mean, puppets and technology. It's a, it's a whole to do. Mochi is not working. Go, 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 go and fix something. I don't know. Go down there and see what's going on. <laughs> I can't hear anybody. Is this thing working? Yes. One, two, one, two, three. When do we start this thing? Mochi just jumps down and presses a bunch of buttons, and then we figure it out like this. Oh. <laughs> 
best way to solve anything, just mash a bunch of buttons. And then usually it just works. What do you think your big takeaway from this whole TV show is? The coolest part about our show is that it, it, it's like really just brings people together. Food, you know? What strange things? We've seen stranger things than that. Oh, stranger things. Yeah. It's really just a cool show that just teaches kids all over the world. You get to learn about what they eat. That's amazing. Well, I'm really excited to watch the show. Thank you guys for your time. Thanks. Yeah, I'll see ya. Bye, everyone. Bye. Come on, let's dance them out. <laughs>Sebastian and Brandon, keep up the great work. I guess I need to up my socks game a little bit. Anyway, well, finally, there's a school music program in California that is teaching kids how to explore their love of music while also giving them a much needed break from these stressful times. (laughs) 
seventh grader, Richard Arter, knows the rhythm by heart. What style of music do you like? Funk. Because <laughs> those are the best bass parts, right? Yeah. <laughs> A bass guitarist for less than a year, the 12 year old practices daily. Has music made this somewhat easier for you to be able to have the, the bass? Yeah, it, it, it's kind of like an escape for me, something to distract me from the pandemic. An escape for Richard and other middle school students who received an instrument and instruction for free thanks to a partnership with the Los Angeles Unified School District and the Fender Play Foundation going beyond traditional music programs. 5,000 kids doing this? 5,000. It's pretty amazing. Our programs have continued, but this is a chance to allow participation for students who otherwise wouldn't have. Music is like a really important part of my life. When I listen to music, I'm a really creative person and it just makes me feel amazing. When seventh grader Ajene Campbell received her bass guitar last summer, she was overjoyed. I feel blessed for the opportunity to be able to do something with myself while in this pandemic because it's been pretty boring, so having something to do really does help me get through the day. Playing an F right here, right? Classes meet twice a week on Zoom, taught by LA Unified teachers, right from everyone's living rooms. Now, kids that wouldn't have access to Mr. Adame per se or another teacher, they could and maybe that instrument wasn't taught at that school. Maybe that particular instrument wasn't taught at that school, but now they have access to it. With the bass, I got to go dig deeper into my music creativity. For sixth grader, Julia Ponce, practicing has helped her focus during virtual school. If I stress through a bit of like class and I just need to take a break, I would just go ahead, start practicing on my bass, and honestly, I would start getting calmer, and it's actually it's kind of like a happy place every time I start playing on it. Welcome to our musical corner. I had the chance to drop in on a recent bass class to see what tunes the kids have learned so far. A bass guitarist myself, I often pull those guitars you see on our broadcasts off the wall to play in my free time. Okay, as one bass player to the other, I know why I like the bass, because it's like the bottom end and just holds the song together. Why do you like the bass? It's probably the one part of the song that I'm always looking for. Whenever there's a song that I want to learn how to play, the first thing I listen to, the bass line, and then I start to move along with the rhythm. There you go. Richard and I got a chance to jam out together. The reason I started playing bass was actually to, to accompany the jazz band in junior high. You're having a lot of fun, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for jamming with me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, too. Well, guess who's going to have to practice a little more? Those kids are awfully good, really proud of what they're doing. That's fun. Well, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. And be sure to follow us now on Instagram at nightlykids for more. And parents, you can even submit your child's question here as well. And a program note, you can catch a new episode of Nightly News Kids Edition every Thursday on NBCNews.com and YouTube. Thanks for watching, everyone. And remember, take care of yourself and each other.